It's Reviews Day Tuesday in our YouTube sponsored entry to Awesome Stuff Week 2015. And man, this keeps freaking happening to me. I am always declaring some new monitor to be the best thing ever. Compared to other 3D monitors that I've seen, this is hands down the one to get. And it might just be the best I've ever seen. Only the lack of G-Sync prevents this from winning my coveted Editor's Choice Award. The only choice for someone who wants all of that stuff. 4K is off my wish list and large format 21 by 9 is on it. My new top choice for a productivity-minded workstation display. And the XR3501 is my new top dog gaming monitor. And then someone, be it Asus, LG, Acer, BenQ, whoever, keeps standing up and being like, um, excuse me, uh, ours has a high refresh rate, or like, ours is IPS, or ours is bigger, or ours is curved, fool. Well, today, it's finally over, because the X34 Predator is here from Acer, bringing perhaps an end to my quest for the perfect monitor. Let's find out if it succeeds, shall we? The Master Case 5 by Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid-tower PC case your own with a variety of modular parts and accessories. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Physically, it seems like, whether it's through careful market research or pure trial and error, Acer has improved a lot in terms of their performancey-looking industrial design because the X34 Predator manages, in my mind, to look gamery without crossing the line to tacky. Starting at the back, I do wish that the entire industry would lose the infatuation with glossy surfaces, but there's an optional VESA mount adapter, and the tilt and height adjustable stand has these kind of sharp angles and lines to it, and with only a tiny orange accent on the cable management pass-through to reveal that it's a gaming monitor. The bezels are as slim as they can be while keeping that required chin bar to house electronics, and even the front logo issues a brightly colored affair in favor of a monochrome one with a subtle orange backing material. But enough about how it looks on a shelf, let's talk specs and see if the X34 Predator ticks all the right boxes. 34 inch curved display, okay, not as curved and therefore immersive feeling as the BenQ XR3501, but better than flat, IMO, check. AHIPS panel technology for superior color performance and viewing angles, big check. 3440 by 1440 resolution, much more difficult to drive than 2560 by 1080, more on that later, but a much finer image and way better for regular desktop use. Check again. So that sounds great so far, Linus, but hold on a second, none of this is anything we haven't seen before. In fact, what the hell is the difference between this and the XR341CK that you reviewed literally two months ago? Great question, and here's the answer. The things that set the X34 Predator apart from anything else that I've ever seen is that in addition to all of that, it features G-Sync technology, which you can learn more about here, but basically it eliminates stutter and screen tearing during game rendering on supported GeForce graphics cards, and it can be overclocked from its stock 60 hertz refresh rate to a whopping 100 hertz for a very noticeable improvement in how frequently updated frames can be delivered to the gamer's eyes. So that's it. Acer has officially delivered everything that I've been asking for since first laying eyes on an ultra wide one and a half years ago. Everything else at this point is just gravy. Which isn't to say that gravy is bad. Revisiting the rear of the monitor, we've got a bit of an unusual I.O. layout. There is a four port USB 3 hub, power input for the external brick, an audio pass through that maybe someday a monitor manufacturer will put somewhere usable. And what's this? Ah, perhaps some gravy. Acer has implemented not only the standard DisplayPort 1.2 that's been required for G-Sync operations since the technology was first introduced, but also an HDMI input that, along with the 100 hertz refresh rate capability of the display, suggests that the Predator is running something more than just the original G-Sync module. The secondary input is limited to 50 hertz by default, indicating that, to my disappointment, it is an HDMI 1.4 
4 rather than HDMI 2.0 port, but it's redeemed somewhat by my successful overclock to 60 Hz on a GTX 980 Ti, and it's still a heck of a lot better than nothing if you have a secondary PC or a console that you want to plug into your main monitor periodically. And speaking of display overclocking, how does that 100 Hz overclock work? Well, actually, the process was too straightforward for me, and I got confused. I should probably explain that. People who are familiar with display overclocking know that it's done through the graphics card control panel, not the monitor's on-screen menu. Well, not on this bad boy. To achieve the advertised up to 100 Hz overclock, you just navigate to it in the menu, confirm a reboot of the monitor, and configure your shiny new refresh rate in Windows, the same way that you normally would. Which, of course, instantly made me curious to see if it could be pushed even further using the NVIDIA control panel. And no, not even one hertz. Acer has already put their balls to the wall, so to speak. 100 hertz is all you get. So then let's change gears and talk about what it's like gaming on my ultimate monitor. Well, to put it succinctly, it's super awesome, but that doesn't really get my point across properly. I mean, I guess it's just hard for me to deliver that amped up, you know, like, yeah, f yeah, and like fucking rocks speech here, because for me, none of this is a surprise. I've experienced G-Sync, I've experienced high refresh rate, and I've experienced curved ultra wide. I've just been patiently, somewhat patiently, waiting for someone to put them all together. So the experience here is more akin to getting home, sitting down after a long day and taking that first bite of my wife's amazing homemade pizza than it is to ripping open a surprise present on Christmas morning. This is a deeply satisfying, amazing gaming experience in everything from racing to shooters to third person to anything. It's the bomb. Which doesn't mean I'm not going to try and find problems with this monitor. Starting with input lag testing, the X34 Predator managed a mere 13.7 milliseconds with my Leo Bodner input lag tester, so that won't be an issue. And picking up with panel color performance, well, damn. When did gaming monitors get so good at this? I mean, no, it's not perfect, but at 98% coverage of sRGB and color accuracy falling in the delta E of 2 to 4 range pretty much across the board, this monitor, gaming aside, is even suitable for prosumer photo and video editing in the bog standard default user mode without any calibration. Hot diggity! There's a touch of backlight bleed on a black background, but nothing out of the ordinary. And I feel like the anti-glare coating, while not the most glare reducing I've ever encountered, strikes a good balance between the clarity of the image and the reduction of reflections. So then, my only real complaints that I can find are in the on-screen menu. The monitor lacks any ultra-low motion blur settings for controlling backlight strobing, something that I don't personally use because it can't be used at the same time as G-Sync right now, which I prefer, but it's been a staple on modern G-Sync monitors for quite some time, so it's disappointing that it's not there. And, my second complaint, the on-screen menu is just generally really clunky to navigate. It's hard to tell what button you're pressing and it takes forever to get anything done. But I guess that's about it. Oh, no, there's one more thing, the price. The X34 Predator may be amazing, but it comes in at a whopping $1,300 US MSRP. Not to mention that because it runs at such a high resolution that to even benefit from its 100 hertz refresh rate, you are going to need some serious graphics and CPU horsepower for modern AAA games at high settings. But if you're a baller, I can say with confidence this is the best gaming experience you can put on your desk. And here's a cool side note, if you're a baller, thanks to this video's inclusion in Awesome Stuff Week 2015, there should actually be a new ad unit on it that YouTube is testing that allows you to see where to buy it from right within the video. For most of us, this is probably a non-factor, but if you've got a couple grand burning a hole in your pocket, then I guess it saves your mouse and keyboard a little wear and tear. And on that subject, MassDrop. You guys might have heard of MassDrop before, or you might not have, but if you do want to check it out, it's draw.ps 
slash Linus Tech Tips, and they've got all kinds of great stuff. Whether you're looking for like a cool new knife or an audio recorder, a pair of headphones, a keyboard, they've got all kinds of great stuff. And the way it works is simple. The community gets together and says, hey, we've got this amazing thing that we want to buy, but Ah, it's a little expensive. MassDrop takes those requests back to the manufacturers and distributors and gets authentic products that the more people commit to buy, the more mass, the lower the price drops for when they all go ahead and pay at the end of the drop and ship out to everyone. Very cool model and it is definitely worth shopping if you got a couple bucks and you don't mind finding something cool and spending it because I have certainly fallen into that trap before. Like, oh, this is cool. Oh, that's really cool. No way, that's the drop price. Done. So check them out at drawdops slash Linus Tech Tips and that is linked in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, buying a cool t-shirt like this one. This isn't a t-shirt, whatever, you get my point. Or even with a direct monthly contribution through our community forum. Now that you're done doing all that, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click that little button in the top right corner to check out Luke's video where he determines what is the optimal positioning of the next down card when you're running a graphics card in your top slot for best performance and cooling.